A lot of people used to have the misconception that the Golden State Warriors cheated or that they got lucky somehow with that crazy dynasty they built. Like, people look at Steph, KD, Klay Thompson, DeMarcus Cousins, Draymond, all the stars they had and all the attention they received, and it's like they forget or they don't even know the half of what it took to put all that success together. Something I learned in life, a lot of times when somebody's successful at anything, we tend to idolize the finished product, like what we see, the success, the glamour, we idolize that. But we never look at and appreciate the little squares that it actually took to complete that puzzle and put it all together. Like we never appreciate the grind. Take this video for example. You'll probably watch this video, the 10, 15 minutes, however long it is, literally hear me ask for the like and just blink at the screen. You know why? You didn't sit there for an hour making and typing this script, two more hours recording, six, seven plus hours actually editing the video to put it all together. You didn't sit there to do that, so you're not gonna appreciate that. If you didn't get that segue, make sure you guys like the damn video. But, that's what we do with professionals or anybody that makes stuff look so easy. We don't really appreciate what it took. When Joe Laker purchased the Warriors in 2010, they were only worth $450 million. Yes, I say only because for a team, that's relatively cheap. At the time, Golden State had just went 26-56, and 56, Steph was still wearing Nikes, and Golden State was honestly a laughingstock at that point. When you look at Steph now, I mean, he's obviously a dog. I mean, he's a superstar. You got flight trademarking him and all that. And for that reason, he's the highest paid player in the league. But his career started nowhere near like it is now. And that was actually perfect for Golden State long term. Steph used to battle ankle injuries. And I mean, bad ankle injuries. In 2011, he only played 26 games because, I mean, his ankles were just going crazy. At the time, it looked a little bad, but... It was actually a big blessing in disguise. This gave Golden State a lot of leverage when it came to breaking that bread. Instead of Steph getting, you know, a massive contract that would set the team back and not allow them to get other players and all that, they got a friendly long-term deal that set them up perfect for that rebuild. In 2011, they picked up Klay Thompson, easily one of the best shooters ever, a perennial all-star, and a top five two-way player. In 2012, they had a huge draft, and I mean, they really didn't miss on not one of their picks. Harrison Barnes, I mean, he was never really anything too special for Golden State, mainly because of the lack of touches and all that. But if you look at the rest of that first round after Harrison Barnes, Golden State avoided a lot of first round buses, and I mean a lot of them, so that was the best pickup. Also, in that second round, Golden State picked up Festus Azili, not, nothing too special. And they took a chance on an undersized, almost positionless player named Draymond Green. And he really wasn't anything too special. To me, I mean, he was just so unorthodox. You just didn't know what the hell you were getting and how he was going to fit in with your team. In his scouting report on NBADraft.net, they called this man, quote, a low-risk, low-reward player. Now, I'm not saying Draymond's Carl Malone, but his resume has proven this to be a tad bit off. I mean, love him or hate him. And I mean, he has given you a lot of reasons to hate him and a lot of reasons to love him if you're a Golden State fan. Draymond has been the glue of what they built their identity from, defense. Yes, they had the cute plays, the splash plays, the threes and all that, but never forget how they initially took over the league. It was their suffocating defense led by the most versatile player of the decade. Say what you want. So for the year of 2012, they absolutely nailed the draft, and they pulled off an extremely successful trade. Andrew Bogut had just led the league in blocks, Draymond Green was like the interior captain, and the following year, they landed another big trade. Golden State pretty much stole Andre Iguodala from Denver, and they turned him into the perfect all-purpose player. Like, he hit big shots when he had to, he came off the bench when he had to, he bothered the opposition's best wing player with his long ass missing incredible arms, he was perfect for the small ball death lineup, like, he fit perfect with Golden State. Then, the following season, Golden State got Sean Livingston and gave him a rebirth to his career. Before he came to Golden State, he had been on nine different teams in nine years. I mean, he was a complete journeyman, and we all know about his injury. 
Golden State basically used them as a mismatch for almost every small point guard defensively and basically an automatic 6-8 to eight points a night with that annoying ass turnaround jump shot for 5 seasons. If you're a Cleveland fan, you, you definitely know what I'm talking about. All these perfect moves, it laid the foundation for players like KD and DeMarcus to even want to come to Golden State. And with all these moves, this brings me directly into the two most underrated pieces to the Golden State perfection. First, Mark Jackson. Yes, if you watch him on TV and you hear that mama there goes that man, I mean, that, that, that stuff get annoying, I get that. And yes, he's still jobless, but his coaching resume will show you absolutely no legitimate reason why. He had one losing season in a lockout year with Steph only playing 26 games. Other than that, he completely changed their culture. He basically instilled that toughness, that grit, he was relatable to the players, and he really emphasized the importance of defense. And the results, stats, all that stuff, I mean, it shows it. His first year there, this is how they looked on defense. His second year there, this is how they looked. His last year there, you can see the steady improvement. If you look at their first championship in 2015, they dominated the NBA defensively in almost every statistical category. Even Steve Kerr would admit, bro, that started with Mark Jackson. And the second underrated piece to the Warriors dynasty, Jerry West. Bro, everything Jerry West touched as a president basically became gold everywhere he went. When KD joined Golden State, he said the Warriors all coming out to the Hamptons, showing their support. That's basically what got him there. But the final phone call with Jerry West, that's basically what sealed the deal. That's how strong this man's voice is. And the crazy thing is, that's not even the biggest thing he did for Golden State. What Jerry did in 2014, this is what saved their dynasty. Back then, and I hate to say back then like it was a long ass time ago, but it seemed like it was. Back then, the NBA was played a bit more inside out as opposed to the crazy threes and all that that it is today. And Golden State, they obviously had the deadliest shooting backcourt even back then, but at that time, shot crazy backcourts, that wasn't known to win championships. This is when the star guard and the star big, that was kind of still a thing. So the Warriors had no problem shopping Klay Thompson and really finding that fit that matched the prototypical style. Kevin Love, who was dominating the league at the time, putting up nasty numbers, 30 rebounds, 30 points, all this stuff. He was offered to go and stay for Klay Thompson and they really flirted with it. But the GOAT logo himself, he stepped in and actually threatened to quit if this trade went through. At the time, this was an extremely unpopular stance, but that's how much faith he had in something that was nowhere near proven. And now, looking back on it, I, I, I would definitely say he made the right decision. When you look at the Warriors franchise in 2020, remember I told you they were worth 450 million 10 years ago? Well, now they're, they're 10 times that. Not only did they win and dominate a half decade, they actually built a culture that everybody respects now. Even with KD leaving, look at how he left. He was willing to agree to a sign and trade so Golden State wouldn't be left high and dry. That trade that they got, D'Angelo Russell, bro, that helped them out. That gave them trade bait to make another trade more realistic to their play style and now they're set up perfect for the future. Now they have two of the top 20 players in the league still and at least four of the top 50 players in the league, so, and, and a possible draft pick. So like, man, bro, they set up perfect. You can hate this team or love them, man, but you can't take away from how they built this thing from the ground up because, bro, it, it was very, very strategic and very impressive. If you guys like the video and leave good comments, this will be like a little series on this channel. Like next video was gonna be about OKC and how they messed up everything. This is Golden State and how they basically built the perfect dynasty. I was gonna do OKC next video. If you guys want that, like the video, comment. Basically show me guys, you know, show me that y'all want it and all that. Make sure you guys like the video if you like the video. Comment, subscribe, turn on my post notifications, follow social media sites. Do all that great stuff guys and until next time as always. Stay tuned.